number one requested uh, topic uh, among users, uh, winners and losers, is cryptocurrencies. Aswa, tell us more about cryptocurrencies and how you price and or value them. The first thing is you cannot value currencies, you can price them. Excuse currencies, and, and in a so sense- So real quick, difference between value and pricing. Okay. The difference between value and pricing is value try to estimate what you'd get as cash flows. So when you value a business, you project mm -hmm. out what the business will generate as cash flows. You try to, so you can value cash flow generating assets. Mm -hmm. But gold, currencies, Bitcoin are not cash flow generating assets. If you ask mm -hmm. me what the value of gold is, I don't know, but I can price gold. Mm -hmm. And we price currencies relative to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the opening to think about cryptocurrencies and why they've risen so much over the last few years. Mm -hmm. If you think about gold, let, let's think about gold, the old alter, alternate to paper currencies. For hundreds of years, mm -hmm. let's face it, when people lost trust in paper currencies, because all you have is a, is, a, is a piece of paper. It's all based on trust. There's something behind and it. And doesn't every fiat currency eventually collapse throughout history? And every fiat, and, and fiat currencies vary widely in trust. Mm -hmm. If you gave mm -hmm. me a Venezuelan Bolivar, I'm probably mm -hmm. better off just using it as toilet paper than mm -hmm. trying to spend it. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about fiat currencies, not all fiats are equally trustworthy. So mm -hmm. when we lose trust in currencies, we go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. For the longest time, the place we went was gold. Mm -hmm. I think what's changed is for younger people, the place they go when they don't trust paper currencies mm -hmm. is now a cryptocurrency. But help me, because I, I understand theoretically as an yeah. old guy, you go to gold and it can be used for fillings or jewelry. What is the underlying guarantee and limit of a cryptocurrency? But, but let's face it, the people who bought gold didn't want to use it as in real, they wanted to sell it to somebody else at a higher price. Right. This is a pure pricing game. The reason people have historically bought gold is not because they think gold has a physical use, yeah. but because they think it'll have enough of a pricing attached to it that they can sell it to somebody at a higher price. So it's the illusion that it's become a store of value. Exactly. Okay, yeah. so help me price Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think the key to think about is if you have enough of the population losing trust in, because if you lose trust in governments and central banks, and who can blame people for losing trust in them? And if you're 35, 30, or 25, you have no interest in pricing gold and playing the mm -hmm. gold game. You actually think you have an inside track on pr playing the pricing game with Bitcoin. And one of the things that always strikes me when I talk to people in this space who are mm -hmm. cryptocurrency fanatics, is they think they know more than they do. Mm -hmm. They think they understand everything about blockchains and who holds what and where the pricing is going. And that's always a piece of the pricing game, is people who are overconfident about their capacity to forecast price. But you don't need very many people for the pricing to kind of do what it's done, which is if four or five percent of the population has lost trust and is paranoid. Mm -hmm. So Trump yeah. is the best thing to happen for cryptocurrencies. Or collectively, globally, you know, you could th you could argue that governments across the globe it's have a more balanced view. You know, it, it's I think a problem. So it's, you you think in any sort of crisis, more missile tests coming out of North Korea, cryptocurrencies similar to gold, go up. People stick cryptocurrencies under the mattress. In fact, one of the most interesting things about this bull market is it, it's a very differentiated market. One mm -hmm. half the market thinks that. Everything is cheap. The other half thinks everything is incredible. I've never seen a divide as large as I have in the market that we're in, which mm -hmm. is between the bulls and the bears. There's mm -hmm. almost no connecting point. And it's very political. It's, it's more political than economic. You tell me who you voted for in the last election, I can tell you whether you're bullish or bearish. Mm -hmm. That's how much of a correlation there is between politics and what you think about the market now, which is not a healthy place to be. So I think that even though markets have been going up, the subset of people who think that markets are overpriced is a fairly large one, and it's very intense. And mm -hmm. they've believed this for three, four, five years, and that's the group that's increasingly leaving stocks, and they're saying, well, I can't go to bonds, I'm getting 2%. What am I going to put my money in where I can make some money in the future? 25-year-old has 100 bucks, mock portfolio just create an asset allocation for me in a 55-year-old? The tool is very simple. You want to spread your bets so that you, you, you have time as your ally. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the 25-year-old, I don't even ask them, don't try to time the market. Don't tell me the market's mm -hmm. you know, too high, too low. It doesn't matter. You've got 40 years to play this game. Mm -hmm. Just take your money, make your asset allocation. So you want a portfolio that looks like the... So if I took the market cap of every traded asset in the world and put in a pie chart, Mm -hmm. I want the pie chart of your portfolio to look very much like that. So huge, huge diversification and low cost. Exactly. 55-year-old. 
55-year-old, you've got to worry more about, in this world especially, about the fact that if you have a shock to the market, mm -hmm. you might not be able to make that money back before you need it for retirement. Mm -hmm. So the 55-year-old, the first question I would ask is, hey, do you have, still have an income? If you've already retired at 55, the kind of advice I'm going to give you is going to be very different than if mm -hmm. you're a 55-year-old with an income stream still coming from working. Because let's face it, a lot of 55-year-olds have a 15 years of work life yeah. still left in them. Yeah. So I think that you got to get more cautious, but the old, you know, once you get to be 65, everything's got to be in cash, you got to rethink because a lot of 65 year olds are still making enough of an income that they don't need to touch their portfolios yet. Mm -hmm. So it really is a question of, do you depend on your portfolio for your cash needs? And if the answer is yes, then I'm gonna increasingly shift you away from any kind of risky asset class because mm -hmm. there is no safe place in the world where you can put your money in, make an 8% return, and still draw cash every year and not worry about your principal being affected. Aswat, thanks very much. Thank Professor you. Aswat Demodoran, more information at demodoran.com, is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Money. It's a guy.